Good evening. Hi, my name is Tyneen Aisha Smith Clark, and I am here to share with you my presentation on family counseling. Family counseling is an entity where we help family be counseled in all areas of life. Children, grandparents, students, and all alike. As they need to come to Jesus Christ, we are here to share the gospel. First, I would like to thank the Greater New York Conference of Seventh-day Adventists for this wonderful opportunity to give my chance to share the good news of Jesus Christ. I would also like to thank my daughter Jocelyn Clark, who is a proud student at Oakwood University in Huntsville, Alabama. She had contributed a great deal in giving her interview and her insight in which I will read a little later on. I would also like to give thanks to my brothers and sisters, hi everyone, <laughs> for being with me throughout my classes, my basic classes. I had also received information through other classes that helped me grow in this opportunity in becoming a lay counselor. Thank you so much, Hadassah Clark, who is currently a student at Uchi Pines Institute and pursuing a program in which she will be learning health and nutrition and herbal remedies and medicine in pursuing God's work for cancer research. Thank you, Greater New York Conference. Thank you all, and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. Dear God, I just want to thank you for all that you have done. Father, it's because of you that I sit here today in front of my brothers and sisters and those who will one day hear this message and the love of Jesus through counseling. As we continue through this endeavor, may your Holy Spirit speak with me and be the words of my lips and the meditation of my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, as I begin family counseling, this family counseling is referring to choosing the life partner. So the first chapter in section three in Adventist Home, The Great Decision, written by Ellen G. White. She goes on to mention a happy or unhappy marriage, vital factors in the choice, qualities to be sought in a prospective husband or wife, accept only pure manly choices and traits, easier to make a mistake than to correct it, better to break unwise engagements. Then we go on to true love or infatuation. Love is a precious gift from Jesus. True love versus passion in this section we will learn about that sentimentism to be shunned as leprosy now everyone knows that leprosy is a very terrible disease it goes back to ancient times when a leper passed through in a street they will cry out and say unclean unclean so sentimentalism is a word that Ellen G. White uses to describe what leprosy is like so it ought to be cut out. Counsels to a romantic lovesick girl. All right, ladies, lovesick? Are you lovesick? Stay tuned. Also in this section on true love and infatuation, we will learn about the caution to a youthful student. Results of unwise courtship and marriage and guard the affections. Common courtship practices, wrong ideas of courtship and marriage, keeping late hours, mm, is that a no-no? We will find out. Trifling with hearts, deceptive practices in courtship, avoid the first down step, sow wild oaks and reap a bitter crop. Forbidden marriages is also discussed in section three of Adventist Home. Marriage of Christians with unbelievers. 
God's commands are plain. God forbids believers marrying unbelievers. Do not be unequally yoked is what God has taught his children throughout the ages. He wants the best for us and he wants us to be equally yoked with believers who have the same like mind and heart. King Solomon. King Solomon's example. What can we learn from the ancient King Solomon? What can he teach us about marriages? Stay tuned for that. The plea, he is favorable to religion. The change is wrought in the believing one. Risking the enjoyments of heaven. A home where shadows are never lifted. The Christian's reasoning. A safe marriage alliance and one when one partner is converted after marriage. Among other sins, we have sodomy, adultery, fornication, and polygamy. All of these four have their roots in pride. And finally, lastly, in this section, we will also go over when counsel is needed. So we hear, heard a lot about the outline as to Sister White, when she clearly made it stated as God showed her how counsel is to be within the circle ring of marriages. But we want to learn how to become good counselors. We must seek the counsel of God first. In his holy word, God says to be fruitful and multiply in Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 to 28, and around verse 29. God also tells us what exactly what we need to do. And that will be in that chapter. So when counsel is needed, we need to get counsel from the Bible. The Bible is what we use as God's holy word. In this book, we will find out that God ordained marriage and that through marriages is what heaven is like. So the same image that we see in heaven is the image we see here in the Bible as it is expressed for us to learn and to live by God's true life guidelines and principles. So counsel is also needed as we continue. When infatuation is deaf to counsel, youth need the wisdom of age and experience. Mature judgments of parents should be valued. Confide in godly parents, parents to guide the affections of the youth, and the example of Isaac. Wise parents will be considerate. God has given us this ministry of restoring relationships, and that's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. Thank you, dear Holy Spirit, for that inspiration. Now, let's get into the lesson. In the great decision, we have a few things going on here. We're going to find out that marriage is something that we will inf influence and affect our life, both in this world and the world to come. We can't have self-plans without God's knowledge. Making haste slowly and take your time in marriages. Do not push yourself to go very far ahead. Do not rush to be married. Take your time and let God speak to your heart. You need to consider the character of the individual when seeking out to be getting married, okay? And this comes before you say the I do's. An influence of the home they are pursuing to build. So what does my mate, in other words, what does my mate think about? Where are we gonna live? Are we gonna live in a beautiful home? Maybe some live in large apartments, some start out in basements, that's okay. Whatever you call your home and God is in the middle, Christ is there, that is your home. And that makes Jesus very happy. But Ellen G. White also mentioned to us that we must start our homes in the countries. Because in the country, we have less temptation of the sin that is carried on in the cities. Building positive friendships 
and companions weigh very sentimentally and watch the character of the person that you choose. Your companions should fit physical, mental, and spiritual well-beings for parents and children alike. Give wisdom, share burdens, provide trust, love God, and follow God. In partnering, find if he or she is worthy of being in this relationship with me or with you. Figure out if he or she is truly affectionate for him and her to be in this case. Affection goes a long way. Sensitivity to the needs of your spouse is so important. When choosing a life partner, we want to consider those values, okay? Love, generosity, giving, self will, self giving self to the other person, self-denial, sacrifice. All of this comes into finding a life partner and must take practice beforehand before the I do's come. Take this all into consideration that our God is a great God and he only wants the best for his children. As we reach our heights of heaven and become more like Christ, we must consider that these small principles will become our best deeds. True manly traits are pure. Some who is diligent, aspiring, loves and fears God, as we just mentioned. Marriages that are selfishly planned don't end well according to the prophet. Now, a marriage must be of giving of self. So selfishness is the opposite of giving self. And we must remember that selfishness is not of God because God is a giving person. He's a giving spirit. He's everywhere. God is all knowing and he's all present. And through his Holy Spirit, he works and acts through us. So how can we be selfish? We must be giving because our spouse are gonna have needs. What if our spouse is sick? What if in looking for a partner, they don't feel well? And we want to give out to these individual in this in this relationship and help and leave and leave it into a good partnership. We must consider these factors into the character of the person. So don't rush yourself. Take your time. It's okay. God would rather for us to take our time than to rush into a relationship and later on reap the consequences. If you enter into an engagement with the other, understanding of the other person's character and don't think it's not um, to stay in that marriage that you need to stay in. Don't try to run out of the marriage, okay? When that time comes, think about staying in that relationship. God needs us to work it out. God wants you to have peace and to be secure in him through his son, Jesus Christ. Now in true love and infatuation, affectionate hearts, truthful long words with expression of love makes happy families, influences upon all who come within the sphere of influence. Modesty, simplicity, sincerity of morality and religion will characterize every step towards an alliance in marriage. Love lifted out of the realm of passion and impulse gives spiritually and is revealed in words and in deeds. A Christian must have a satisfied tenderness and love in which there is no impatience or fretfulness as the prophet speaks the rude harsh manner must be softened by the grace of Christ thank you Jesus because of God we are saved by grace and through this as our prophet mentioned is that the harsh words that we speak to each other in finding a partner 
in pursuing a marriage relationship is not what God wants us to do. We must have a respect as to how we speak, how we talk, and how we behave. Now, let's be realistic here now. Let's go a little bit alongside. Sometimes in marriages, we have disagreements. One spouse is in disagreement with the other, and we don't always agree on everything. And at times, what do we do? Argue. We have arguments, and we become unhappy with one another. Some argue before a marriage because they really love each other, and they're like, you know what, I just don't agree. And they part their ways for a day or two, some don't speak on the telephone. <laughs> you know how that goes. I'm in a marriage too, so I can pretty much relate to a lot of these um, ups and downs. But um, in front of God the Father, I'm not worthy to be here. <laughs> but I'm going to share the truth because this is the gospel of Jesus. It's sharing the truth with those who are taking their marriages and finding a life partner very seriously. So this is not a joking matter. It is very serious. So in those arguments, you want to become to a solution. And you will find out why solutions are very important. Turn your mind also away from romantic projects. Elevate your affections and develop your mental, physical, and powers of Jesus. You are in a formative period of character. Nothing with you is to be considered trivial or unimportant which will distrust from your highest, holiest interest, your efficiency in the preparation to do the work God has assigned you to do. The holiness of the oracles of God is not by every and any who claim to be a Bible Christian. They prefer a wider scope. They do not want their selfish indulgences limited. Must be very cautious as to these indulgences, okay? And passions. Love overcomes all. Love even covers a multitude of sins. But remember, put yourself and your passions aside and look to others as to how to help them, how to reach out to them is the most important thing because in this world, God created everyone. He loves your next door neighbors. He loves your family, your cousins, your grandparents. But just think about it. If you had a young lady that was your niece and she was thinking about getting married to a young man that she's known for about five years, would you allow her to get married? Now, I'm sure in five years she would know a whole lot about them, but just remember, in, re in this world today, there's always something new to learn. And we must be open with each other. And that's what Ellen G. White expresses. She wants us as Christians to pursue a Christ-like manner in pursuing a partner because there are many avenues in which Satan has for us to go the wrong way. But God says, no, no, you follow my way. And as Jesus said in the New Testament, he quoted, he said, narrow is the path, but broad is the way to destruction, but narrow is to eternal life. So go down the narrow path with Jesus and you will find eternal life and true happiness, okay? And much abundance peace. So as I move along in this presentation, we're going to also learn more about marriage between believers and unbelievers is forbidden by God. But too often, the unconverted heart follows its own desires, and marriages unsanctioned by God are formed. So what does this mean? This is basically saying, for the sake of time, that having an unbeliever in a believer's marriage on purpose, right, is forbidding by God. We must be careful as to who we're married and know who we want to have a life partner with in far as relationship. It's not sanctioned by God. It's not blessed by God. And it's definitely not anointed by God.
These marriages are formed and they can cause drastic consequences later on. So the go-to is to know your life partner. Here's a moment you will all have been waiting for. Remember we mentioned King Solomon? Okay, King Solomon formed alliances with women, with women of forbidden nations, which led to his destruction. Emphasis and re refer your information to historical texts, scriptures, and research to King Solomon and the palace in which he lived. Now, King Solomon was all wise. We know that he got his wisdom from God. He came to God in the middle of nowhere and he asked God above all things. Now, remember, he was a king and he could have asked God for riches, gold. Um, today, what well, we have cash and coins. Okay, gold, he could have asked God for silver, but he chose something very unusual. Now, most kings don't ask for this. And count me if I I'm, if I'm, don't know, know much research about the kings of the past. But this particular king had a love for God in his heart. And when he asked God for wisdom, he wanted more knowledge as to rule over the people of Israel. God's people are special to him. And as a leader, we are expected to ask God for wisdom. Not worried about all the things around us. We have nice homes, beautiful cars, and we have maybe money in the bank or money elsewhere, okay? <laughs> and beautiful clothing, and we're up and ready on preparation day, which is today for Sabbath. But we must remember that this king didn't ask for anything. So how does a natural king in this world ask for only wisdom? Now, today in our society, with all the sin and greed. We see people asking for many things. They're shopping, they're spending money, they're talking, and they're going to and fro about their daily lives. And not one ounce of God exists. Oh boy, that is the path that Jesus warned us. He said, do not go down that path of destruction because broad is the way and narrow is his way. King Solomon didn't know what to do with the people of Israel. That's why he went to God first. Praise God. He put God first in his decision. But as we begin to read in the scriptures, as you research, okay, for the sake of time, King Solomon started making alliances with women that were foreign lands. So you may ask, okay, what's the big deal? He made with foreign women of other lands well the big deal was he did they did not believe in God and they were of foreign lands worshiping other gods other than the God of heaven so we will not look too deep into the life of King Solomon but just to leave you with some information I pray to God that you will research and look into this and find this interesting truth okay for yourselves because God wants us to read and study the scriptures and you will find King Solomon's life placed in more than one area of the Bible okay so the most important thing that we learn from King Solomon is to do not make alliances with women of foreign nations do not become unequally yoked with unbelievers to ask and pray to God for wisdom He's the source of all wisdom. As we learn in the beginning of the book of Proverbs, the Bible clearly states that wisdom can be sought and found. And we must look after her and take wisdom into the bottom of our hearts. This is where God is found in wisdom. Furthermore, although the judgment of the believer may suggest that, that God is with them and he's in union for life. With an unbeliever yet, in nine out of 10 cases, inclination, inclination triumphs. You may agree and mingle with your unbelieving spouse, 
But once the Bible is brought out in being with that spouse, division will start to be seen. The person will remind you that you married me. What is this God stuff? You married me. See, there goes the selfishness, the pride. Okay? And as we know, the pride comes before fall. So our hearts and minds in choosing a life partner must be sought in God first. We have learned the consequences. We've seen King Solomon's example. We've also know that there's another young man named Isaac in the Bible and look into his life. Remember Jacob who married Leah and thought he was getting Rachel? He was deceived by his uncle Laban or in choosing a life partner. Jacob had done some things in which God had repaid him and sadly he had to work another seven years. So in choosing a life partner, the life of Jacob shows us that if we truly love someone, we will do everything that we can to make them happy. And we will stick up and we will continue to work towards that relationship. Only in Christ, a marriage can be safely formed, as we see. Now in dating and marriage, this is by a young lady by Jocelyn Clark. She said in choosing the right partner, in step one, you need to pray about dating and marriage is part of God's plan for you. Not everybody is defined to be with someone, but God did make Adam and Eve to be together. Paul was single and in his ministering for the rest of his life. Also, Hosea was married to Gomer, who was a prostitute. But God chose Hosea to show Israel his love for both sides of the coin. <laughs> okay? So God's love for Israel in their sin and God's forgiveness of their sins. Seek God and ask him if that is what he had envisioned for your life if God wants you to be married and wants you to find a life partner because not everyone quoted in the scriptures did were in marriages. Some of them were alone and felt lonely as to not having a life partner, but God's will was the total opposite. He needed them to be single so that they could fulfill their purpose in Christ and move on in doing God's work. God has reasons for different things that we do not know. There's stuff that's left as a mystery, okay? But we must trust God, have faith, and believe that every step of our lives here on this earth will be fulfilled by his Holy Will, through his Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. In step two, she said, you need to work in becoming um, a whole person. This young lady also describes that discovering your interests and your hobbies and what makes you happy and going to therapy to get healing from past traumas. So she's saying that do something that you enjoy doing. Find something that you can do and give to others. Find a talent, a gift that God has given you earlier on, before, and choosing a life partner, okay? Find some occupied time to build that space and don't be idle with your time. Some have past traumas. This is something very, very serious that this young lady Jocelyn, as I had gotten an interview from her, that she said that the life traumas, some need to overcome traumatized situations due to family upbringing, childhood past, and we can go on the list. But we all know what sin has caused. And sin is the actual disease of all of us in mankind. So she said that trauma is something that needs to be dealt with. So before you think about getting into a relationship, look deeply inside. There may be some unforgiveness. There may be some resentment, some bitterness from the past. 
God wants us to overcome those things. Because if we don't fully overcome that picture, that big picture, we could end up bringing baggage into a relationship which will later on have its consequences. So let's enjoy life and don't rush yourself, as she said. Now, according to a second interview that was done in choosing a life partner, a young lady named Hadassah, who is at the Yuchi Pines Institute today, she said, as we speak on the importance of dating leading up to marriage, it is considered very sacred. It is not an I do and an I in a few months, years or later, and I don't anymore. There are many reasons why people date and marry, but without God as the firm foundation, there's no guarantee it's going to be strong. She then goes on and quote, as I read. Now I'm not saying that even the that um, the godly foundations don't have their ups and downs of when it comes to the world. If you put God first and God is your foundation, the world has its ups and downs, right? Relationships and all arounds, ups and downs all arounds. They do have those. Reason being, yes, we are in a godly marriage, but life does happen and we are human. From day one, God tells us the importance of relationships with a spouse. In Genesis, she quotes in chapter 1, verse 28, God created us to be fruitful and multiply. In Malachi chapter 8, verses 14 to 15, God tells us straight up the importance of what the marriage bond is. People don't get married sometimes without thinking, not always knowing what the reason is. This verse in Malachi chapter 8 verses 14 to 15 tells us the importance of the bond, the marriage bond in forming two into one. Two characters, two beings into one. And as God said in the beginning, two became one flesh. And in Isaiah chapter 54 verse 5, Isaiah tells of the foundation of the marriage and how it is to be. Dating and marriage is very important as we see today. We must understand that we do live in a world today, as we see from these two interviews, that these two young ladies knows and understands the actual truth of finding a life partner. There are many youth out there today that are going to and fro without understanding why they're even boyfriend and girlfriend. And we all understand and know what that can lead to. If God is not, if God, if God is not in it, then it's not a godly relationship. Our youth of today needs to understand that in finding a life partner, it is so vitally important. Don't make decisions on your own. And as we read further, according to Ellen G. White, she says that even our parents counseling us and parents being involved in our lives, making, helping youth to make, helping marriages to make their most important decisions is something that we all must do. It is the parents' duty, as the prophet spoke, to help counsel those who are finding a life partner. And I thank Ellen White. You know, she's dead and gone and resting, praise the Lord, awaiting for the, her, the resurrection to take place, which is the first one. <laughs> That's another topic. But let's stay on topic. I thank God for using her to give us this information because today we have examples of youth going into the hospitals and guess what? The doctors are asking the parents to step out of the rooms. Now, I will not go any further because this is clearly about choosing a life partner. But in that example, we see how Satan is using these tactics to divide the youth from their parents. And everything that should be done should be done accordingly, as the scripture says, a family must stay together. 
And as they say, a family that prays together stays together. And we must not allow the world's principles of living to interrupt the truth as to how God's real principles he asks and wants us to live. So we're learning as counsel is very important that we must pay close attention to when it's needed. Get counseling. Get some help as to how to have a happy, well, and safe partnership. In the marriage bond, we also learn that bonding is between a male and female. And we thank God for how he has formed marriage since Eden. Can we live back to Eden? That may be a question for many because of the fast paced world that we live in where marriages and finding a life partner, it can be dating online. Oh, let's go into dating online. So into dating online, there are many who say that dating, oh, why don't I just press a button and find a partner? Well, that is widespread today. And as we know by goods by uh, the six o'clock news, we see that many have been suffering serious consequences of not having that face-to-face -face loving, touchy, upfront relationship and just doing it behind camera. That is the dangers of dating online. Now there are situations where people have dated and they have found the right one or they found a relationship that worked but let's do it God's way let's be patient and let's wait for the Lord to bring the right partner for us and for you no matter where you are God knows you God knows every person and he knows his children he knows that some of us long to be married some of us are looking now for a partner. But Adventures Home by Ellen G. White is such a, a vital book to understand and read because it teaches us how to go along the steps. Now remember, the Bible is very first. We must put God first. And you will find several situations, marriages, successful ones, failed ones, unfortunately, and many other relationships and guidelines as to our God has taught them in the Bible of ancient times how to live according to the word of God. If you're an online dater, you will need to know about many recent statistics. There are 7,500 sites to online dating websites. That's a lot. The online data use, dating users is 23 million. That's a huge number. Now, just looking at those two numbers, just imagine if everyone who was online dating actually opened up the Bible to find out. What does the Bible have to say about dating? What does God tell us about having relationships? Just think about the power and fire of the Holy Spirit that will be so magnified in these people finding it if they will only seek the kingdom of God first. And then all those things will be added unto them. Added unto you and added unto me. You see why God told us to stick with the word of God. You see how Christ cleans our character. He puts joy in our hearts, peace in our minds. Life is not a perfect thing, but it can be perfected in Jesus Christ if we put God first. So, where do we go from now? The first thing we must consider is is that we must do everything with prayer. Prayer is the key to unlock many doors. 
So you pray to your Father in heaven in the name of Jesus. And you ask God to help you find, to find you that life partner. But the second thing, you must be patient. You have to wait because some things must take time. God may be preparing that spouse for you. That spouse that you're looking for, God is maybe molding him. You know, like the, the thing about the potter and the clay. God is preparing something that you don't know because he's all knowing or then maybe he just wants you to stay single and he doesn't want you to find a life partner <laughs> timing is also key timing everything on his time patience comes along with that as well you see how the character of God is molded into helping us be happy God wants the best for us, as stated earlier in this presentation, and how we as Christians can share the gospel and the love of Jesus in this holy world to others in finding a life partner, and why counsel, as Ellen White quoted in Adventist Home so many years ago, that counsel is needed. So, in conclusion, I would like to say that only Christ in a marriage can be safely formed. One thing in common courtship practices today is followed by impulse and is followed by uh, a blind passion, spirit of flirtation, the violent violating of modesty rules and breaking the law of God. Staying up late displeases God. It interferes with your health. It's unfitting the mind for the next day duties and have an appearance of evil. This is what's coming out of the Common Courtship Practices chapter of section three. Now, I know a lot of you, there are many of us today who like to be up on the phones all night, all day. But you know what? If you have a habit of doing that, I'm going to ask that we pray, that you pray and ask God to help you to go to sleep. Your health is affected and we all must practice these healthy practices. So why is that in finding a life partner? Because I'm just thinking, okay, that when we finding a life partner, we like to be all up, up nights talking to someone that we have an interest for or with other people that we are surrounding ourselves with. But no matter what and who you're talking with, God wants you to go to bed early and get your rest so you can be healthy and have a healthy body, a healthy mindset, and be ready for the following day if it comes, right, by God's will. Because we don't know what tomorrow may bring. We're not to worry about the cares of tomorrow, as Jesus said. So, health is great for all areas of the human body. Our cells need to be hydrated with water. You can also sprinkle some lemon in that water, because lemon, from what I learned growing up, is a cleanser. Going to sleep also is very helpful for us to be well rested. So, God is displeased when we're not following these principles. So there's also a health side to this in finding a life partner 
and Ellen G. White has brought that across the table so that we can learn how health has to do with in finding a life partner. To trifle with the hearts is a crime of no small magnitude in the sight of God. This will reveal itself in married life. He who would lead a daughter away from duty, who would confuse her ideas of God's plans and positive commands to obey and honor her parents is not one who would be true to the marriage obligation. Once there's a bad step, a downhill spiral begins. More steps are to happen, so flee from useful lusts. Flee from useful lusts. The prophet also mentions that in the youthful years, she then says, you only have one youth. Make it useful. However, but if you refuse to connect with God and go into the way of temptation, you will surely fall. Be careful and beware of temptation. Every temptation. There are many of them. But they're just pitfalls and downfalls to make us fall. Okay? God wants to lift us up. So she's warning us to be, as youth, to connect with God. If you refuse to, then you'll be in trouble. So, in choosing a life partner, we clearly see, as I am about to end, that there are many factors into waiting for the true life partner to come your way. As a reminder, remember that God loves you, and He cares about you, and you are special to Him. No matter where you are, no matter who you are in choosing a life partner, just remember that the love of God exceeds all things. My name is Tyneen Clark. Thank you once again, Greater New York Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, for this beautiful opportunity to share this presentation in such a t limited time with you and with those who may hear this message. May God's peace be upon you, and may he rest upon your souls. Thank God for him, and through his son Jesus Christ, the love of God to flow to many. My prayer, as I conclude, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time that we spent here together on this beautiful time and good preparation day of Sabbath. We thank you, Father God, for the message that has been spoken today. I pray for those who are looking for a life partner to choose them, that they will be searching through prayer and asking you for wisdom into finding the right one, knowing that, Father, you know each and every one and that you know what's best, and giving us wisdom would be according to your will. Father, you don't wish that anyone rush into any relationship, but also that they will be patient and wait on thee. As you speak to their hearts first, may they put you first, and then the peace will come. And that wherever there's hurt and resentment and bitterness, Father, I ask that you take that away from your people and from those who need to be ministered to. I ask that we'll go out and give this world of the gospel of peace that people will know that
there's a God that cares about them. And Jesus, his son, his beloved son, plays a role in this lasting event in reaching through the third angel's message. May we continue on with the peace of Jesus and grow in thee. In Jesus' name, please forgive us for our sins. And we pray, amen. God bless.